Hello Library Comic Con attendees! I'm Sarah from the Pohick Library, and today I'm going to share with you how I go from, ooh, I want to wear that costume, to, or even, First step, which may seem like a no-brainer, but is very important, is to choose what you want to cosplay. In my case, I'm going to walk you through my process for two characters, Modern Merida and a historical redesign of Belle. No matter what you go with, you'll want to start by finding reference images of your character. I have a ton of Pinterest boards to keep ideas organized for any character I may want to cosplay. I can save ideas on a whim and come back to them when I have time to put a cosplay together. You'll want to start off by finding as many reference images to save from as many angles as possible. Yep, even the ever-elusive back of costume shots if you can find them. Also like Pinterest because it lets you break down the main folder into subfolders, which is helpful to keep your board from getting cluttered with reference images, patterns, fabric ideas, and anything else you might find for your costume. Once I've picked my main reference image, my next step is to break down the clothing shapes that I see. I can see Merida is wearing a long sleeve top and a short sleeve top, shorts, thigh high socks, and boots. Belle is wearing a fitted top with sleeves that fit to the elbow and flare out, and a wide skirt with a cutaway front. Her shoes aren't visible, but I can make a guess that there's some kind of heeled shoe to fit into the fancy theme. Knowing those main shapes, I can now look a little bit more closely at the details of those shapes to find or to make the layers. Since Merida is wearing modern clothing, I'm going to raid my closet first to see if I already have anything that will work with a few tweaks for this cosplay. If I find I'm missing pieces, I like to look first at thrift stores or online retail sites to see if I can score something similar while keeping my budget low and being a sustainable consumer. I was in luck and able to find black boots at a long sleeve green top in my closet. Yay! I think I'll just roll up the sleeves of the green top so it matches the three quarter sleeve look that the art has. I did not have a loose fit white short sleeve shirt so I found a plain one on Poshmark. The shirt has a design on it so I'll go ahead and paint it on myself so I can match the art. To keep my lines clean, I made a stencil using wax paper, which can be temporarily ironed onto fabric, and dabbed acrylic paint on over it. Merida's shorts have a specific tartan pattern on them, so I think I'll use a fabric I already have and make my own pair of shorts. To find the pattern, I went searching through the pattern books at my local craft store for something that looks similar, but I ended up already having this pattern in my ever-growing stash. I love to hit up the 10 for $1 sales when they happen. This was the most complicated part of this cosplay because I was choosing to make something from scratch. If I had searched hard enough, I probably could have found green and purple plaid shorts, but I knew I already had the Clan Dumbrock tartan print in my stash from another project. As for the thigh-high socks, it was difficult to find secondhand socks in green, but I found white ones, and I'll go ahead and just dye them to match. And with that, most of Modern Merida is ready. Elle gets a little more complicated for the clothing pieces, as she has some inner layers you don't see but are key to getting the right silhouette, especially since I'm choosing to change her dress from the movie to fit the style of the 18th century. While I was finding reference images for her, I was also researching the layers that went into 18th century gowns, and have come up with a few undergarments and other supports that I want to include to recreate the shape. I'll need a shift, a layer to help keep me comfy and keep the other layers clean, a pair of stays, a shaping garment that will also distribute the weight of the skirts off of my waist, some pocket hoops, a very important layer to help the skirt get the wide flat shape with an added bonus of being very large pockets, and at least one petticoat to help hide the lines of the pocket hoops, but also possibly more of them to keep me warm if I want to go out in cold weather. With all those layers out of the way, we can get to the ones you can actually see. Next up is another petticoat. This one is made with a fancy rose fabric and fabric trimmings. I chose to save money and use the fancy fabric on the front and a plain, less expensive cotton on the back, which will always be covered up while I wear the gown anyway. She's looking almost ready, but before we get to the outer gown, next comes a stuff which is a separate decorated front panel that gets pinned to my stays. Don't worry, the boning in the stays prevents the pins from poking through to my skin. Finally, there is the outer gown, which was the most complicated layer to make. Because it's fitted, I made a mock-up of my pattern with an inexpensive cotton before cutting the real fabric for this project to make sure it all fit the way I wanted it to over the other layers. The gown also has extra fabric trimmings. I used photos of 18th century gowns in museums as inspiration on how to arrange those trims, and I could easily reference those images from my Pinterest cords. 
The final layers are the accessories. The accessories for each costume can vary and can be included or omitted as you need to fit your style and comfort, which is why I left them for last. Merida is wearing a necklace, has her signature bow and quiver, and has a tattoo on her thigh of her little brother's initials. My accessories for her will also include a wig since we have very different hair. You can see in my final photo that I didn't have easy access to a quiver, so I left it out even though I already had her bow from a previous cosplay I did. Belle had fewer accessories. She has a necklace, a hair bow, a back bow, a piece I didn't include because of the drapiness of my outer gown, and a wig. So there you go. Those are all my planning and preparation steps I used to take a cosplay from an idea to reality. If you use these tips to help put together your own cosplay, share them with us on Instagram by tagging at Fairfax Library. You can find other Fairfax Library Comic Con events and videos on our website May 3rd through May 8th, 2021. We look forward to seeing you there.